Now, be honest, have you ever heard of someone getting a job and the only reason you think that they got the job is because they're a woman, or they're a person of colour, or they're LGBT, etc, etc. Even before you've investigated their work and seen if they're actually any good. I admit I have, and I think perhaps it might be especially hard if you've got a lot more experience than this person that gets the job in the end. And no doubt that was going through a lot of people's minds when Pienaar Toprak was hired as the composer for the upcoming Captain Marvel movie recently. But who is Pienaar Toprak? And was her hiring just a case of pandering to audiences? You're watching Ranger on screen, and this is the story of Pienaar Toprak. Pinar was born on the 19th of October 1980 in Istanbul, and she began classical training at the age of five. She started learning composition and various musical instruments at the local conservatory in Istanbul, I believe. But in her teens, she moved to Chicago in the US to study jazz, and then later she moved to Boston to study at the prestigious Berklee School of Music and the undergrad film scoring course. After that, at the age of 22, she moved to LA to do a master's in composing for film, and she's stuck around there ever since. For a while after that, she actually worked as a programmer at Hans Zimmer's remote control Control Studios, but her first credit came in 2003 with the feature-length film Controlled Chaos. Since then she's had a very steady flow of credits with at least one a year, many years often four or five credits. Some of her most notable in my opinion are Sinner in 2007, a TV movie Beyond Loch Ness in 2008, The Crimson Mask in 2009, Girls 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 in 2011, and The Challenger in 2015. But the big breakthrough came in 2017 when she scored the smash hit video game Fortnite. This video game has taken the world by storm. Everyone of a certain age range with particular consoles is playing it, and that got her music out there. It may well have even landed her the job scoring the DCU series Krypton this year, which may well have even helped her get the gig scoring another big superhero thing this year, Captain Marvel. But when it was announced that she got this role, the internet was awash with many people saying that she only got this because she was a woman. And not only were these comments coming from a probably misogynistic standpoint of believing that true equality had already been reached in the industry, and that this was somehow special attention, but it also completely misunderstands the state of the industry. Her gender no doubt played a part in her being hired, but the people behind Captain Marvel were probably going to hire a female composer anyway. I imagine they wanted to hire as much female talent as they could to help women in the industry. And there are so many amazing women composers out there. Rachel Portman, Debbie Wiseman, the late Shirley Walker, Anne Dudley, Leslie Barber, the late Delia Derbyshire, Wendy Carlos, Laura Cartman, I could go on, but most do not get half as much attention as the men do. So when Pinar was hired from probably a selection of absolutely incredible female composers out there, a lot of people just saw it as them pandering to feminists or political correctness, or like it's some kind of special treatment, when really it's only trying to redress the huge imbalance in the film industry, and the film composing industry in particular. Only 1-2% to of the composers of the top 250 blockbuster films in 2014 were women. And to put that into a little bit of context as well, only 5% of the sound editors were women. 5% of the cinematographers were women, and 7% of the directors. So obviously the genders are not truly equal in this industry, but why is the composing sector so bad? And I think perhaps because unlike some more traditionally technical things like cinematography and sound editing, the original film composers came from the elite conservatoires and music schools. And because usually you only need one composer in a project and a director might use a composer again and again and again, the opportunities just aren't there like they are for sound editors, cinematographers, other sort of more technical roles. And because of traditionally women and people of colour's exclusion from Western academia, these roles would just go to white men, well-off white men as well. And it's really telling actually that even the women and composers of colour who are getting these big gigs in the industry are still only coming from the conservatoires and music schools, when Hans Zimmer himself was largely self-taught, and now look at him. And in the end, Pienaar Toprak is a wonderful example of an incredibly talented composer who's more diverse background than what you usually get in the industry is really adding to her uniqueness as a composer, her musical uniqueness, and that's getting recognition now. But way more still needs to be done to rebalance these inequalities. And we especially shouldn't be doing this if we don't stop to consider. And we especially shouldn't be doing this if we don't stop to consider the true skill of a composer and the diversity of the industry as a whole. So here's my question for you this week. Well, it's more of a task, really. Make one list of all the female film composers you can name off the top of your head. And then, 
do a little bit of digging. Look online, look at websites, social media, IMDb, and make a list of all the female composers you can find. I bet you the difference between the two lists will be quite shocking. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit like and share it with anyone else you think might enjoy it. And if you're new here, it'd be fantastic to have you subscribe so you can join us in our mission of highlighting the importance of music and film to the world.